Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy and today we're doing another Ryzen vs Intel showdown. It's gonna be the Ryzen 5 1600 going up against the Intel i7 7800X. So this is a 6 core vs 6 core showdown. And let's jump right into it and talk about the Ryzen 5 1600. So, this is a 6 core 12 thread CPU coming in with a base clock speed of 3.2 GHz and a turbo clock speed of 3.6 GHz. And of course, this is unlocked like all Ryzen CPUs. The i7 7800X is a 6 core 12 thread CPU also coming in with a 3.5 GHz base clock but a 4 GHz turbo clock and it is also unlocked. Now there are some key differences between these two CPUs. The main one is the cache. So over on the uh, 7800X you get double the L2 cache of the 1600. However when it comes to the L3 cache the 1600 nearly has double of what the 7800X has. So there's quite a bit of a difference there. Also the fact that you get an extra uh, 4 to 8 depending on how you look at it PCIe lanes over on the 7800X and also you have access to the quad channel memory on the 7800X because it requires an X299 motherboard. Speaking of which, let's move over now to the test rigs. So the 1600 here was tested with the MSI X370 Gaming Pro Carbon motherboard, which I really like. This is a really, really nice motherboard, I have to say, so far. The 7800X was tested on the X299 MSI SLI Plus, which has also been really nice. I did a review of that previously. I'll leave that link down in the description down below if you want to check that out, because it is quite a nice X299 motherboard. So yeah, they were. Uh, I try to keep it as similar as I can, but of course, you know, they take different types of memory. So the 1600 was tested with a 16 gigabyte G-Skill memory kit, and the 7800X was tested with a 32 gigabyte Corsair DDR4 kit. But they were set uh, quad channel kit that was, but they were set to the uh, same frequency for all the tests 2933. So that kept it nice and fair there. And also, of course, I use the same ASUS Strix GTX 1080 Ti uh, for both uh, CPUs as well to keep that nice and fair. Now let's talk about the temperatures and overclocking then. So the 1600 uh, was tested with its stock cooler because you can get away with it. Uh, you don't, you can, you know, obviously get uh, better coolers for the 1600, but you can get away with the stock cooler. The 7800X does not come with a stock cooler, so I just use my Corsair H115i, and I would recommend using pretty good, like, all-in-one uh, liquid cooling, or maybe even a big air cooler with the 7800X, because, boy, it does get hot. But before we talk about temps, let's talk about the overclock. So, uh, the 7800X here went up to 4.7 gigahertz. Now that is quite high, that is a good overclock coming out of a six core CPU. So very, very impressive there. The 1600 on the other hand uh, is a lot less. It's coming in at four gigahertz on all six cores as the best overclock. That is very typical for a Ryzen CPU and pretty much what I expected. Now in regards to temps, we see if you look, this was after running IDA64 for five minutes, that the stock temps are actually very, very similar, but the overclock temps, boy, the 7800X is way higher, and that's on a all-in-one liquid cooler, 280 millimeter. So yeah, big win there for the 1600 in terms of temps. It is soldered down though, so that gives the 1600 quite a good advantage there. Now with all that being said, let's jump into the benchmarks and see how these two CPUs perform.
So what do we make of those benchmarks then? Well, the 7800X definitely pulls ahead, especially once it's overclocked. Uh, it really pulls ahead. That's to be expected though, I'm not really surprised. It has a huge clock speed advantage, being able to overclock so much higher than the 1600. So that was to be expected. But even in saying that, the 1600 put up a good fight there in the benchmarks. Quite a few of them were quite close, especially when both of these CPUs were set to their stock frequency. So yeah, the 1600 still put on a good show, but we do have to hand it to the 7800X. However, performance isn't everything, and that brings us nicely into our conclusion where we bring price into the equation. So, right now, over at Playtech, if you want to pick up this Ryzen 5 1600, it's going to set you back 345 New Zealand dollars. Now if you want to pick up the i7-7800X from Playtech, it's going to set you back 599 New Zealand dollars. So it's almost twice the price of the 1600. But not only that, you have to remember that the 7800X doesn't come with a cooler, which means that you're going to have to obviously go out and buy one, and I would recommend a pretty good one at that. And it requires an X299 motherboard, whereas the 1600 you can get away with a B350 or an X370. And they're much cheaper on average than the X299 boards. So it ends up being a lot more expensive overall to go with the 7800X rather than the Ryzen 5 1600. Now to be fair, the 7800X does perform better. So if money is an issue or we took price and money out of this equation entirely then I would recommend the 7800X however in the real world we got to think about money and in the real world I have to hand it to the 1600 it doesn't fall that far behind the 7800X but it ends up being much much cheaper overall when we bring in you know coolers and motherboards and everything else and the CPUs themselves it's just the much cheaper option and it's not that far behind well not far enough anyway to justify the huge price increase of going to the 7800X so yeah definitely got to hand it to the Ryzen 5 1600 once again it shows that it is amazing value for money however that is just my opinion so I'd like to know what you guys think if you were in the market right now for a new 6 core CPU what would you buy? Would you go for the 1600 or would you prefer to go for the 7800X? I'd really like to know what you guys think. Now I thank you all for watching this video. Please subscribe to Tech Showdown if you haven't already and like the video. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.